Yay, we're live. I had a little bit of an issue getting on Instagram to do this masterclass, but welcome. Masterclass number five for the L3 method. This is all about femininity and fitness. And I feel like in this uh, masterclass, I'm going to <laughs> mess up femininity probably a few times, but I will do my best to not get my tongue tied. <laughs> Cool, so I wanna dive right in. First, I like to give a disclosure of sorts and just let you know that anything and everything that I advise on these master classes um, should definitely be brought past your physician first. Never start a new exercise program or nutrition program without consulting with your doctor first and foremost. This is general guidance as well. This is not specific to you and your situation. I do believe in customization. I do believe in personalizing all of your lifestyle habits to tailor those to your goals, your taste buds, your priorities, your schedule, and um, just, you know, your general desires. Cool. Uh, in addition to that, if there's anything in this masterclass or any of the masterclass IGTVs that I do that you watch and trigger you in some type of way and you want to discuss it further and it just opens up room for a deeper conversation, um, you know, maybe it, it cuts in a way that, that you, it, you know, you open up something within you and you're like, wow, and you realize a belief that you have there or a trigger point, like I said, or, or a repeat pattern or something of that nature, you can absolutely send me a DM. I'm happy to chat a little bit further. And if necessary, we can set up a time to, you know, do some type of deep dive session together, if that is something you feel you need. Cool. So let's jump into it. Femininity and fitness. First and foremost, right off the bat, I want to say this applies Everything I'm going to talk about today, maybe not everything, but probably 70%, 70 to 80% of what I discussed today has to do with both men and women, because we all have feminine and masculine energy within us. And I also want to say, please forgive like the polarity that may, you know, kind of be apparent here in this talk. Um, I don't mean to make it so simplistic, like, oh, we're all just a blend of fem feminine and masculine energy. I do believe that there is a lot of energy that transcends both the masculine and the feminine within us and all around us. So it's, it's not about just parsing those two things, but for the sake of really highlighting why bringing feminine energy into your workout regimen, into your overall weight loss and fitness program, why that's so important and why it can really change the game for you. Because of that, I am going to use some polarity. I am going to use some like this versus that. So forgive me with some of that simplicity, but um, that's kind of just how I saw the easiest way from A to B for this talk. Uh, cool. So this applies to both men and women. Your feminine side can be a massive help no matter however you identify um, in avoiding injury and many other things. So why infuse femininity into fitness? Fitness typically denotes a lot of masculine energy, right? That's what is really prevalent in this industry. And it makes sense. Men are typically created to be physically stronger than women. And women typically have a bit more feminine energy. And so physically we are weaker. So when you think about fitness, when you think about training yourself and getting stronger and making your body really, really like fit and physically powerful, we think, okay, whether we're conscious of it or not, we think, okay, we're going to go into that masculine you know, area within us in order to accomplish this goal of getting stronger and more powerful and more you know, big or whatever. There's an, an underlying belief that if we don't approach our fitness and weight loss goals with masculine energy, then they don't get done. So remember, masculine energy is not just about the physical power, but it's also about linear thinking, structured thinking, get it done no matter what the cost, do what you need to do no matter you know, what it takes. The healthy masculine has structure and organization and a discipline and a perseverance as, you know, vibe to it. Feminine energy in the unhealthy, like, so feminine energy in its healthy context is flexibility, is flow, is all encompassing, is 
thinking more in terms of a circle, right? How can I include it all? How can it all come together to synergistically work versus masculine just plowing forward ahead and just having this really intense focus. So the unhealthy feminine is um, like half-assing it or um, not accountable, wishy-washy, not getting the job done because eh, it doesn't feel good, right? So that's kind of like the distorted feminine. So we are nervous about having that, that kind of laziness, if you will, that just like, oh, well, I was excited about this for a while, but I'm not motivated anymore. So I'm just going to like give up. So we head really far in the left direction, the left brain to stay in our masculine so we can make sure that the job gets done. Now, here's what happens at times. We will we will get the job done no matter what the cost. And in doing so, it is possible for us to ignore our body's signals and symptoms when it's saying, hey, this was a great idea at first, but we kind of want to like take a little bit of a detour because it's actually going to get us to our goal in a more sustainable, long-term lasting fashion. And I'll give some personal um, personal examples of this in a little bit. If you read my post yesterday about my two back surgeries, this was all me. So if you're feeling like, ooh, that, if any of this touches on you, like, man, this sounds like me, this is, sounds kind of like the way I operate. I, there's absolutely no judgment here because this was all about how I operated. And I had to learn the hard way to take a different route. I had to learn the hard way to incorporate and balance my energies. And my hope in this masterclass is to give you examples and to give you information and maybe some guidance so that you don't have to deal with the same amount of excruciating pain, hangups, and just fear that I had to deal with. Okay, let's see, I'm looking at my notes here. So in the, in the United States, we still very much lean into our masculine energy in the workplace too. So not just in the gym, but also professionally at work. We you know, wanna get ahead, climb the ladder, you know, get the, the thing accomplished so we can have the accolades, get the raise, get the bonus. And we're handsomely rewarded for doing so. We're rewarded in the United States still for being so in our masculine. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that in, in, in a vacuum. But if we don't start to bring in some of the innate wisdom and intuition that our bodies and our feminine parts and pieces um, have waiting for us, then we'll never have 360 degree success. Never. Because you'll get where you want to go. And then you won't feel fulfilled when you get there. And the feminine is all about the embodiment. It's about the fulfillment. It's about the deep sense of like peace and just knowing that what you did matters and is important and you deserve and are worthy of the fruits of your labor now. Okay. So let's describe both sides as they pertain to fitness. Remember, we're all some unique blend of the two energies and a lot of energies as well, like I already said. And the more we can get both sides to play well with each other, the more in harmony you're gonna end up feeling and the more inner peace you'll be able to create within your system. Um, also, you know, from a physiological standpoint, the less acidity will build up. If we're always in our masculine, it can create a kind of chronic stress. And again, this is generalized. There are so many different human beings on the planet with so many different blends that are comfortable and feel like home to them. So someone who operates, there are people on the planet who operate very strongly in their masculine and very little in their feminine, and that works for them. It's okay. But I'm, I guess, more talking to the folks on, who are gonna watch this masterclass who um, feel like something's missing or are feeling like a strain and, and having to push too much to do their workouts and, and accomplish healthy nutrition in their day to day, there's like something that's lacking and it's keeping them from either getting to their goals or staying there once they've gotten to their accomplished you know, result. So uh, like I said, the more we can get both sides to play well with each other, it's gonna feel like instead of the like two oars in a bo boat, 
let's see, am I rowing opposite? Yeah, I think I, oh, I don't know. It's like pat your head rubber dummy. If you get, if you can get those, your two sides to, to just have a synergy, then it'll feel like you're going forward because it'll feel like both oars in the boat are rowing forward. But if right now you're wondering like, why do I feel this disharmony within? It can feel like the two oars are rowing in opposite directions and you're not really going anywhere and you're staying stuck. Um, yes, from a physiological standpoint, there is acidity in the system when um, we lean too heavily on one side um, and there can be too much alkalinity in the system if we lean too much on the other side. Neither like direction is good if someone is trying to achieve a sense of balance. Again, that's unique for them. Everyone's balance will feel different. Um, but yeah, if you have a lot of acidity in your system, that only means that your body will likely hang on to more water weight. So you'll be chronically more bloated. So this can be mistaken as body fat, but it's just bloat that the body is hanging on to to protect you from the pH level of your system. So an easy way, not easy, but a way that your body protects you is to keep your water high to dilute the acidity. Um, so when does our masculine energy come in to help? When is being in our masculines, in our masculine, a good idea? Well, when we're creating a workout schedule, when we are creating a system. So a system is something that will make things easy, brainless, almost robotic so that you'll get it done and not have to use too much brain power. So a system could be like every night before I go to bed, I lay out my workout clothes for the next morning. That way there's less resistance. When I roll out of bed, I know I don't have to think, I can just throw on whatever I planned the night before. Um, a system could be like, I've already put, so that I make sure after work, I go to the gym, I have my clothes, already packed in a bag with my shaker bottle with my protein powder. Another system could be, um, I have my flasks at work so I can um, keep track of how much water I'm taking in. Another system could be um, having like a meal delivery. Um, that's another system. Another system is like organizing your supplements in a pill box. Just things that make your life easier because you're dialed in ahead of time. Uh, what's that phrase? It's like six Ps. Prior proper planning prevents poor performance. What a masculine phrase, but it's helpful. That's useful. I love that phrase. Um, organization, same kind of thing. Implement, implementation and follow through. So the masculine energy is really helpful for us when we are like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. I know I made myself this promise, but like today I just don't feel like it. Well, we get to check in and figure out if the body is saying, hey, danger, something really is to be avoided here. We shouldn't be, um, we shouldn't be doing this today. Or if it's just like, ah, oh, this feels unfamiliar. It's kind of unknown. So I have a little bit of fear around it. And therefore I don't feel like doing it because I just, I don't know. It's just, it's unfamiliar. So I'm a little bit scared. And then we can decide to lean into our masculine a little bit more, push through and see what's on the other side um, in a safe and effective manner. So what else is the masculine good for? That initial push. Okay, so what we just kind of described was you doing some type of system, some type of system or routine, whether it's workouts, nutrition, water, sleep, stress management, whatever. Um, you ha having done that for a while and then you wake up one morning and you just don't feel like doing it, but you did make that promise to yourself that you would. So that's when the masculine can come in and say, hey, we got this, we plan to do this, We're, we get to have a rest day tomorrow, as long as we get this done today type of thing. Um, but let's take it back a few steps. The initial push, let's say you haven't worked out in a long time and you're gonna start working out again. And it's like, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. You know, your body gets used to and wants more of whatever you give it often. So if you've just been sitting on the couch and leading a pretty sedentary lifestyle, the body is going to like reject initially something new and different. It's gonna be like, I don't wanna do this. So that initial push can come from our masculine energy and be very beneficial. Like, okay, I said, I'm gonna do this, I'm going to do it. And you get off the couch and you stretch and you warm up 
and you do a little bit, maybe you don't do a full throttle CrossFit or powerlifting session or whatever you've done in the past, because you know that that would be not smart for your longevity. So you get up, you stretch your arm up, you're very, very cautious and, and, and safe, and then, and you're hydrated, and then you do maybe half of what you've done in the past. Like you do a 30 minute workout and then you can feel accomplished. Remember, we always want to protect this house. We always want to feel like a winner up here. If we feel like a winner, if we feel good about what we're doing, we're more likely to keep doing it. So that initial push coming from our masculine energy can be very helpful as well. Another thing that's great, going to sleep on time, turning off the TV and the social media, going to sleep because you committed to. So the distorted feminine, we could say, may, oh, I want to stay on Instagram longer. I want to like scroll through pretty photos of dresses or self-tanner or whatever. <laughs> Can you tell us being from experience? I just want to like keep looking at these like pretty pictures and like, oh, I don't know, I've worked hard all day, so I deserve this. Versus the masculine will come and step in and say, hey, you know what? You promised yourself that you go to bed at 930 and you haven't been successful in the past, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. So you can't start now. And we promised ourselves that we would do this. So let's give it a shot because in the long run, this is healthier. I know that you deserve some downtime, but you also deserve some rest. And that's the way you're going to ultimately get what you want out of life by being well rested and fresh and ready to go the next morning instead of dragging because you spent an extra hour and a half on social media, which got you really nowhere. Another cool way masculine steps in. Um, here's another way, being real with yourself, being humble enough to see when there's work to be done and committing to a real game plan to change these parts of you. Another way that the masculine energy is, is super helpful, getting the reps in. Just wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, getting those reps in, just making it a system, making it a habit, making your body get so used to your healthy habits, your healthy game plan, that it'll start to feel weird after 21 or 30 days um, that you haven't done it. You'll be like, ooh, I feel off. I need to get back to my healthy routine. That's a great thing. That makes it easy for you to win. And that oftentimes is we get to give thanks to our masculine sides for that. So behind the scenes, it's not all glamorous. And that is when the masculine can be really, really helpful. Like when we're wash, rinse, repeating, when we're just, you know, after the lights go off and when no one's looking, when you're just getting those reps in, when you're getting those days in where you're doing the steps, personally, professionally, fitness-wise, relationship-wise, spiritually, whatever you're doing, your deep inner work, when you're doing those repeated actions, they can add up to a very different life, to a transformed life, to a life really worth living. So yeah. It's not all glamorous and that's when the masculine's like, cool, let's do this. Where, when are there signs or what could the signs be? Switching gears here a little bit. When there's an imbalance and it's time for the feminine to come in and assist. Okay, so we just talked about how the masculine is really helpful. Now let's talk about when we've gone too far maybe in the masculine. When we're feeling signs of burnout, when we're not having any fun, when we feel empty, when we're feeling robotic, when we have too much rigidity, too much structure, um, not enough flow, feeling disconnected from nature, that's a big one, feeling disconnected from your body, you know, like keeping a cool distance between my head and my body, that's not okay. We wanna be completely interconnected in, in, in order to be in our full power and the most balanced. Lacking substance, like, What's the whole point of this? Why am I doing all this? Like forgetting your why, forgetting like your really big vision. Um, <laughs> I wrote this one in my notes. Feeling like a sexy shell. <laughs> Does anyone know what I mean by that? When we feel like a sexy shell, it's like now we have this hot body. We've trained, we've done all the things, we've eaten healthy and now we have this sexy physique and we don't feel like there's anything inside, sexy shell. 
So when we feel like a sexy shell of a human, that's when it's time to let the feminine come in a little bit. <laughs> Uh, the pendulum has swung so far in one direction. So you're feeling the strong urge to just say F it and be a bum. I put that in my notes as well. So basically, here's a pendulum. It swings, right? If it swings too far this way, we're like super lazy, sitting on the couch, eating fast food. If it swings really far this way, we're like super stringent, super um, structured and disciplined. And we're going to the gym every day. It doesn't matter. We're not getting enough sleep, but that's okay because we're up at 5 a.m. working out and we eat asparagus and broccoli and that's it. And then somewhere here in the middle is when you can have a blend of play and perseverance and discipline. So also have compassion for the self when we need a break and the, the wherewithal to know, or like not the wherewithal, but like the future seeing to know if I make these promises and commit to them and stick with them, um, I will have this greater sense of self-worth and I will have the life that I want. So this is the, the middle ground in here. Um, so when we've swung the pendulum so far in this direction, then we go in this direction. We're like, oh, I just want to be a bum and lie on the couch. That's an indicator that we've done too much over here instead of like a little bit over here and then a day off a little bit over here, but we're still getting eight and a half hours of sleep. So on and so forth. Um, existential crisis. Yeah. Like what's the point of all this with my existence? And then of course, injury in the severe case. So that's, that was my story. I pushed and pushed and pushed. I had a herniated disc probably in high school. Um, and I didn't care. I mean, I guess I cared, but I didn't let pain stop me. I was so good at ignoring pain and ignoring my body's signals. I was so proud of being tough. I was so in my ego about being the strongest, most badass girl in the gym, you know, lifting 235, deadlifting that for reps, you know, six reps, like for what? But for what? <laughs> and then of course I, I did that for too long and I uh, eventually was paralyzed. My right leg wouldn't work. And I was in and out of the ER and I was on all types of pain meds and crutches and still trying to work. I was the personal trainer on crutches at the gym. That's not very motivating for my clients. <laughs> and so, you know, obviously I had to get a surgery and then I had to get a second surgery because I didn't learn my lesson and my ego wasn't in check. And that's when I realized, okay, there's got to be another approach. I have to figure out a way to create some connection to my body and honor her and actually listen to her when she's speaking to me. And then there went my journey of just diving so deep into the nuances and the deepest level of connection so that every time I heard a message from my body, from my, this wisdom inside that men and women both have. Every time we hear this, we actually have the choice to listen and honor what's being said. And we can have discernment because over time you build a relationship with this, you increase your depth of communication and then you can determine where those messages are coming from. Are they coming from just like, I don't feel like it or are they coming from like, no, don't do this you're running the risk of burnout or injury or so on and so forth. So there are some examples of when it's time to bring the feminine in. So how can the feminine help here? By prioritizing pleasure, play, doing something for the sensation of doing it, the feeling of it, that's what the feminine is all about. It's all about sensation and play and pleasure. And just, I just want to experience. That's what the body wants. Remember, the mind wants to understand the body wants to experience and the soul just wants to stay on its path. Um, also by prioritizing realignment with your, your vision. What, what am I doing all this for? Why do I wanna be so fit? We always have deeper reasons beyond just like, I wanna look hot. Why do we wanna look hot? Well, I wanna feel loved. I wanna feel attractive. Okay, so why do we wanna feel attractive? Because then there'll be ensured a continual flow of love to me. Um, some people want to be attractive so that they can feel powerful. They can feel worthy, all, all these different things. So diving in and remembering what our vision is, maybe wanting to have a healthy body to be a great example for our kids, maybe wanting to have a healthy body because 
it is in line with your work to be healthy and um, agile and quick. Maybe you have a physical job, maybe you're a firefighter. In order to have you know, those capabilities and be on your A game at work, it's important to stay fit. Um, okay, reconnecting with your body. We prioritize that. That is going to be one of your very top preventative measures against injury having an open line of communication with your body. So as you're seeing here, I'm a little bit like interchanging the feminine with the body because it's more, and I understand we have the right side of the brain, we have the left side of the brain and um, we have masculine pieces. We have masculine hormones within our body. Like I get it, but oftentimes the left side of the brain will override the messages that are being brought from the body. So that's kind of the correlation there. Um, yeah, so it's a, con it's a constant dance. Is our brain helpful and important and awesome? Yeah, totally, both sides, every part. Same thing with our body. And do they sometimes get in the way because they're trying to keep us safe, but they have outdated information? Yes. So to embody the energy of already being there at your goal is gonna be really, really helpful. The reason why, um, the reason why we want to embody that energy is because then the body, or excuse me, the mind, mind and the body won't feel like it's an unknown. They'll feel like, oh, we remember what it feels like to be here because we just did that. We just, we were just in the emotional state of what it felt like to already be at our physical goal. So therefore it doesn't feel as scary. And then with small sips and in time, we can move forward and we can actually see the results of our actions. But if we have 80% of that action, those action steps going and we don't feel safe accomplishing our goal, we'll always do something to self-sabotage and interrupt, even though we did all of that work to try to get there. Cool, also to bring your own personalized touch to your workouts. Um, and you can only do this if you're attuned to your body's desires. So maybe there are, you know, certain exercises at the gym that you love or in your home when you work out at home, maybe there's some that you don't like. So maybe you stack the ones you like in a certain way so that you can do those. And then if you really want to have the result of those exercises you don't love as much, maybe you just sprinkle in one or two instead of all of them. So that's adding a personalized touch and that's keeping, you know, the feelings and, and the, you know, what your body wants in mind while also staying true to the course. I mean, this is an obvious one, but to love yourself, to be proud and honor your body and all that it does for you, this is a super helpful way to bring in feminine energy and allow it to go to work for you so you can stay the course and not just get to your fitness goal, but stay there sustainably. So if you guys haven't picked up on it yet, this is all about sustainability, like every masterclass pretty much that I do. But if we have a balance and the unique balance that's right for you, a feminine and masculine energy, that's going to stabilize your system into the new fit body that you desire. That's what's going to help you ground into that new physique. And we cannot do this if there are parts and pieces of our body and in our system that don't feel like coherent to that new state. So I hope this is making sense. Write a comment if it's not. <laughs> um, to be fierce and strong and wildly feminine requires a stacking of different kinds of workouts. So here's what I mean by that. If we want to, if we're feeling any of those symptoms that I labeled above, so I'll say a few of them again, burnout, not having any fun, feeling robotic, too much rigidity, injury, um, feeling like a sexy shell, feeling disconnected from nature or our bodies. So if we're feeling any of those symptoms, um, a, a really pragmatic approach is to look at your week of workouts. So if currently you're going to the gym every single day and you're lifting every single day, let's say five days a week, and you start each workout with 20 minutes on the treadmill, and then you go and you hit the weights and then you go home and that's all you're doing, it's going to be conducive to you. If you're feeling like any of those things like burnout or what have you, it's gonna be really, really helpful for you to implement some outdoor activity, switch it up. 
implement something that isn't totally focused on the goal, but is more focused on pleasure and play and flow. So you're still going to get your heart rate up. You're still going to be sweating, but you're also having the priority brought in of pleasure, connection with friends. Maybe you do this with friends, connection to nature. And this breaks up the rigidity. This makes it feel like what you're doing has meaning and you can embody more of this. Nature is such a great it's such a great antidote for like so much that could be going on with us. And I get it. Some of you live in climates where it's winter for many months out of the year, but I still urge you to bundle up. And just if you can have a few minutes outdoors, it's going to be really, really helpful. Unless you live in Antarctica. I don't know. <laughs> um, Cool. So does that make sense with different stackings of workouts? So don't just lift every single day. Don't just go to the gym every single day and don't just run outside too. Like do some blend of things. Maybe you love tennis when you were a kid. So go play tennis once a week, you know, go to a yoga class, um, an outdoor one would be cool or, you know, what have you. And if you still love the gym, definitely go to the gym, definitely blend all of these things together so that you have the play component, the pleasure component, the experience. And then you also have the driven um, goal orientated action and um, activity levels as well. Okay. So this is not as true with the food component. So workouts that there's the approach with food, intuitive eating or wisdom based eating, you could even say is very, very feminine. So you can be strongly in your healthy feminine, um, your aligned feminine and eat on track with all of your goals. Not true for other things, but I find that with food, um, because food is such a pleasure-based activity, like that's why food is pleasurable to humans that we can survive and keep eating. And in the future, maybe we'll all be breatharians, but for now, in this three-dimensional form, we're eating food. So, <laughs> um, so I will say that intuitive eating is not possible. There's no way that you're gonna get there if you don't have that really strong connection that we talked about, that really deep level of communication that you've practiced and practiced and practiced with your body. Then you'll be able to have the ability to tap into the wisdom to hold a piece of food in front of you and say, is this right for me to eat today? And it could be right for you to eat one day and not right for you to eat another day. You can even walk up to a display of food at the grocery store. And if you have that deep connection with your body and that really good communication, your body will be able to send you the message, yes or no, this is appropriate for me to take home and consume right now, or no, it's not, which is really, really cool. But that does take some practice and it does take really dropping in and really being able to separate what's going on with the head, what's going on with the body and the different parts of the brain. So that takes some time. Um, and I'd love to hear if you want to share with me um, your journey to intuitive eating. Um, we must embody some masculine discipline first to understand and graduate to that level. Yes, so if you've gotten off course. So what I mean by that is like someone who's always eaten unhealthy and that's all that their body really knows. Remember I said what your body is used to, it's going to want more of. So if someone was raised plant-based, they're just gonna want like more plant-based plant -based items. If someone had, you know, an apple every morning, that is gonna feel familiar most likely to them. Um, if somebody, like here's me, for example, I was raised, my parents, had me eat ice cream every single night, like normal dairy ice cream, every single night of my life. It was the way we solved problems. It's, it was the way we had enjoyment. It was the way we like bonded. That was it, ice cream. <laughs> so it took a really long time for me to kick the habit or like that really familiar feeling of wanting ice cream at night. And sometimes it'll still come back and I'll get like the dairy-free Ben and Jerry's or, um, What's the other one? So delicious, cashew milk, that one's good. But I haven't done that in a while. So it takes some intention. It took me going into my masculine side. It took me not saying, oh, but this is intuitive eating. Like it feels, it feels natural and normal for me to want ice cream right now. So that's what I should do. That, that's my inner wisdom. No, it takes figuring out, well, what's really going on here? Like what, what are we really feeling are we you know so are we feeling like 
I don't mean to like continue saying the same point over and over, but are we feeling something that feels very natural and normal because that condition and those habits were formed a really, really long time ago when we were children? Or are we feeling something that's natural and healthy because our body is literally delivering us this message because maybe it wants more vitamin C, you know, like if your body's craving cherries or strawberries or something like that. Um, or maybe we're craving more iron if the body is craving red butter leaf lettuce. Did you guys know, by the way, total side note, that red butter leaf lettuce has more iron than spinach? I did not know that. But anyway, super cool. So that's what I'm talking about. So initially, if we've all, so to go back to the original point, if we've always eaten really unhealthy, if we were raised on fast to, fast food and like frozen meals and cheese sticks and whatever, it's going to take us for a certain period of time to be more in our masculine, to develop the discipline, to start eating more healthy, to start our body towards the path of actually desiring healthy foods because it doesn't at first. It's like, this is, I don't know what this is. And our taste buds are so dull because we've been eating fast food that's laden with salt and chemicals and preservatives. And we do, we just don't know. But then eventually our taste buds reawaken, they grow back and we are like, oh, I can actually taste the salt and celery. Did you know celery is really high in sodium? Celery is very salty, but to someone who eats a ton of like white, iodized salt all day, which is what is on top of a lot of like fast food and unhealthy food, they'll never be able to taste the celery. Similarly, if you're a smoker, um, you're going to have really dead taste buds. So initially, because if you're addicted to cigarettes, your body will crave cigarettes. It's a similar com concept. But if you, if you dip into your masculine side and you say, I'm going to quit smoking, and then you do, and then you stick with it and stick with it and stick with it and stick with it, Eventually, then it'll be time to figure out, okay, what does my body want now? Now that my body has normalized back to the original state that it was designed for, which was to be healthy and not take in all these toxins, but to, to live and to flourish off of healthy foods, nourishing foods, hydrating foods, mineral and vitamin rich foods, then we can drop in and we can start to ask, okay, what do you, what do you want body? Like what is appropriate to eat now? Which is really cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> to connect with your body in and of itself requires first the masculine discipline, if you've gotten, of course, yes, I went over that already. All of these equal sustainability. The body represents to feminine, represents the femininity. It relaxes and feels safe. Okay, wait, um, that was a typo. So our body, when we're leaning more into our feminine energy, will relax and feel safe if it has structure around that. And, and this is different for everybody, but does that make sense? So if we have some structure, we feel safe. And then if we have some flow, we can feel like we can relax, but one can't go without the other. It's about what you can figure out, what the like good proportions are for you. How much structure do you need and how much flow do you need to feel safe and to feel comfortable and relaxed and to feel happy? The safer your body feels, the easier it gets for you to get the results that you want. So if your body feels safe, it's going to let go of water weight. It's going to let go of body fat. It's going to take its own armor off because it trusts you. It's like, okay, she's got my back or he's got my back or they've got my back. Now I, now I know that I'm going to be treated fairly for a long time, not just for a week. Now I know that I'm going to be deeply, deeply cared for and listened to when something's wrong or something's off. This person, like we're talking, we're talking in like multiple formats as if we're multiple personalities, but the body, if we're looking, we're, we're only almost talking about the body as like a separate entity, the body's saying, okay, she or he or they are going to take care of me. And they're going to listen to me when I start saying, hey, whether it's a whisper or a shout, hey, this is off. Hey, pay attention. Like, I'm trying to keep you alive. I'm trying to keep you safe. So the body feels safe when it feels listened and heard to, communicated with, and um, just nourished. You know, think of the five love languages and challenge yourself to do all five of those for your body. I challenge you. This is the heart of fitness. We think fitness is all about like no pain, no gain, and blood, sweat, and tears. No. 
Fitness is about loving your body as fiercely as you possibly can. That's actually what it's about. So if you don't know what the five love languages are, there's a book on it. You can take the quiz about what yours are, but it's receiving gifts, acts of service, quality time, physical touch, and words of affirmation. Challenge yourself. How can you give all five of those quality, like styles of love to your body and see what happens? Watch the quantum leap that takes place. You'll, you'll go from feeling like your action steps around your fitness, the workouts, the healthy eating, the sleep, the what, you'll feel like that's kind of like pushing a boulder up a mountain to being so much easier. So much easier if your body feels the love from you. It sounds crazy. It sounds woo. -woo it sounds, it sounds, um, you know, fifth dimensional, whatever. Try it. I dare you to try it and then report back results. Okay. Uh, utilizing fitness as an avenue to deepen your sacred relationship with your body will yield you results beyond your wildest dreams. But in order to get there, you have to get over, you have to let go of lording over the body and trying to force your will upon it. Stop with the strategy of forcing a round peg into a square hole. Does this make sense? Stop trying to like make your body do something if it's literally screaming, no, 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 I don't want this, I don't want this. It's not what it's about. It's like saying, hey, Here's a little nudge. We should do this now. Like we get to do this. And everybody's like, eh, I don't feel like it, but okay. That's different than when your body's like, no, stop. I need a break. Cool. Okay. Um, guide, ask, then listen. That's kind of your protocol. That's the recipe. Ask your body, hey, let's, I think we need to do this now. Sound good? And then guide it through. Yes. Yes, okay, this is good. I'm doing this in the wrong order. Guide your body. Hey, we're doing this now. Is this cool? Listen to the answer. Body's like, okay, all right, let's do this. And then you do it. And then you do it again. Wash, rinse, repeat. Organize, prepare, execute, and simultaneously listen. So typically, what? Organize, prepare, execute, prior proper planning prevents poor performance. Masculine, masculine, masculine. Yes. And then listen. Listen for the biofeedback. So do the thing and then step back and let your body have a seat at the table. Let your body be on the board of advisors of you. Okay, how did that feel? How are you doing? Where am I not showing up for you? Where do you feel like I don't have your back? Where can I love you more? I know for if there's men listening to this, watching this, or you're like, I that's weird, loving my body. Well, I, I don't want to tell you, like. The, the guys on the cover of men's fitness who have sustainable fitness, who aren't just like a flash in the pan, but who have careers that last a long time and bodies that stay healthy year after year after year in their own way, in their own manner, they love the crap out of their bodies. <laughs> they love their bodies fiercely. And it's, you know, could be for whatever reasons, distorted, pure, whatever, but that's the bottom line. Um, so make adjustments. Let your body know and whisper to her or him or they that you have their back always, that you will not hurt your body or force your body to do something that's bad for them, bad for her, bad for him. Lastly, just love your body, results or no results. Love her, him, whatever you identify as, love your body fiercely. Have patience. Ah, uh, know with your head what's coming. There's the masculine. And then just have patience. Let the body show up and play its part um, when it wants to, if that makes sense as well. So pragmatic examples of this, dancing, working out, affirming, meditating, scent, like utilizing all five senses, bring sensuality into it. Like how can you top out and maximize the fun in, in an experience around fitness, around nutrition, around sleep? bringing like think back to your five senses think about how you can bring more of those into the experience and then they're going to become more fun so with working out like put on workout clothes that you feel really really good in um you know wear wear a little bit of cologne or perfume or body wash or like whatever to the gym just so that like you smell like mm, i smell good like this is fun um 
listen to music that you enjoy. I know that's kind of an obvious one. Watch a show on the treadmill if you're really, really bored and you know you don't want to run outside, but like watch something that you enjoy. Just bring all the senses into it and maximize your fun. Maybe connection, maybe you go with somebody as long as they're accountable and they're not going to leave you high and dry for your workouts. Make, make your training sessions, make your nutrition, make it a seductive, decadent, opulent experience. Like this is what promotes sustainability. Literally pleasure equals sustainability. If you enjoy something, you will keep doing it. If you hate celery, but you think that you need to eat it to lose weight, I'm just giving a benign example. You're gonna eat celery for two weeks and then you're gonna quit because you hate it. And you're like, ah, F this, I don't wanna do this anymore. So find things that you enjoy eating that are healthy, test out a bunch of stuff. If your taste buds are dead because you haven't been eating healthy, give them a little while to ramp up, be patient with them. You don't have to go full tilt, maybe start eating half you know, raw produce and still keep some of your junk food for a while, keep some of your fast food in there because you go full throttle too quick. You have no pleasure, you're not gonna have fun for, um, a long period of time, it's gonna be short-lived and then you'll go right back to where you were. So make sure you bring pleasure wherever and however you can into your whole program and your whole fitness game plan because then it's gonna ensure that you um, stay there for a long time. So if you want long-term results, the only way to have long-term results is to have long-term actions. The only way to have long-term actions is to enjoy what you're doing day in and day out. And that means having some feminine energy in there, having some playfulness, having some just, again, the feminine just wants to experience, as does the body. The, the mind, the left brain and the masculine, they just want to plow forward. They just want to get the goal accomplished, no matter what the means, no matter what, just get out of my way. I'm, I'm on a straight line towards success and I don't care about anything else. But the feminine's like, whoa, hold up. This precious life, let's be present. Let's enjoy. Let's like be here doing what we're doing. But the problem is sometimes we're not actually enjoying what we're doing and we're lying to ourselves. So when we do step into our feminine, we realize, oh crap, like I don't really like this. This isn't really fun. And then, and then all is lost and then they give up. But in reality, if you just took some time to adjust your game plan, to adjust what you're doing. Okay, I hate these workouts and I just realized it because I brought in my feminine and I dropped in and I got present and I was like, oh, how do I actually feel about what I'm doing right now? And then I realized I got out of a robotic, robotic state and, real, and became a human for a second and realized like, oh, I don't, I don't enjoy this experience. This is not fun for me at all. Well, great, there goes that and then you're done versus, okay, these workouts aren't fun. Maybe I still need a little bit of them in my weekly regimen, but I can incorporate things that are more fun and I can have some fun now exploring what those new activities could be and like taking the time to maybe journal about it or Google about it or whatever. And then soon enough, you have a whole new game plan that you actually enjoy and you're moving forward towards your goal. They're the best of both worlds. You get to be present and you get to be a high performing human. <laughs> um, cool. And yeah, the conscious and subconscious mind, they work hand in hand. That's maybe a chat for a different, a different masterclass, but the conscious mind is like, okay, this is what we want. This is what's perfect. This is, this is the type of human being we want to be. But if we only are there and we don't ever like allow the subconscious to come in because the subconscious rules our desires of, uh, of another type. And sometimes the subconscious can seem very like playful or very like silly or very naughty or very um, non-productive, but we can't ignore the subconscious for too long. Sometimes it's really productive to be unproductive. And we don't have to worry about going into that more um, distorted feminine that just stays in that like super unproductive, super wish-washy state. We don't have to worry about staying there because, because we'll be able to differentiate between the two. We'll be able to differentiate between, okay, healthy feminine, I need some, I'm gonna have some rest right now. I really need some rest versus like, oh, I'm just gonna stay here because I don't feel like doing anything else, then we can rally the masculine and bring that in and say, okay, 
in order to keep moving forward, we're gonna do a little bit of this and then we'll have a little bit of rest. And then we'll do a little of this and we'll have a little bit of rest. So I hope that was helpful. Femininity and fitness, bring it into your life a little bit, bring some components in because um, I do believe it's really, really helpful for you long-term. That's it. I hope you enjoyed and please comment, like, save, and DM me with anything you got. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.